All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for our monthly Squirrel webinar. In today's presentation, we will be discussing the value of self-service using the Squirrel Portal and Learning Cafe. Both of these great tools are readily available for our Easy Care customers. My name is Megan Funk. I'm on the customer success team here at Squirrel Systems, and I will be one of your hosts today. Presenting, we have Will Gunn, Director of Support Services, who will be speaking on the Squirrel Portal. And joining him is Thomas Graham, Product Specialist Manager, who will be speaking on the Squirrel Learning Cafe. And last but not least, we have Cyrus Sai, our Senior Product Marketing Manager, who will be joining me as co-host today. In today's webinar, we hope to educate you on how to fully utilize the Squirrel Portal and Learning Cafe so you can get the most of our self-service options. We really hope you find this session informative and useful while we all navigate these challenging times to our industry. Before we kick things off today, there are a few housekeeping items I need to go over. Today's webinar is scheduled to last about an hour with a Q&A session at the end. All attendees will be muted during the presentation. If you have a question at any time, please post in the questions tab and Cyrus will be addressing those at the end. This webinar will be recorded and published for viewing afterwards. Uh, we will share those in a, in a detailed communication. And at the end of the presentation, we will have a post webinar survey. We would really appreciate uh, if you took the time today to provide your thoughts and comments. Okay, so I'd like to introduce Will Gunn. He's our Director of Support Services. Will is in his 10th year at Squirrel and has been at the helm of the self-service portal, driving its original creation and building it into what it is today. Prior to Squirrel, Will has 15 years of hospitality experience as well as an education and background in teaching. So we're holding the bar high for today's session. Uh, with that said, Will, I will pass it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's dive right in here. So I think the first place we want to start is like, what is this? Uh, what is the Squirrel Self Service Portal? And um, generally speaking, this is where you can go with any questions at all uh, related to Squirrel. So it's where we share all of our collective knowledge with you. Um, it's also where you might find your account information, your your case history and open cases, and much, much more that I'm, I'm going to get into details on. So we launched it back in 2019, mostly just like as an online knowledge base, but it's grown significantly since then. Um, and the majority of our customers are now using it. And for those who are registered for this webinar, um, everyone either already had a portal user, and if you didn't, um, you've probably seen a welcome email from me um, because I created one for you either yesterday or uh, for a couple of stragglers this morning. I created your portal users today, so check your junk mail for a, for a welcome email in case it landed in, uh, in that inbox. So the intent today, though, isn't just like, what is this? It's more around, you know, as Megan said, uh, why you should use it and how you can make the most of it. So let's, uh, let's dive into the details. Okay, so why, you know, why should you use this? Uh, first and foremost, there's gonna be a theme throughout today. Um, and it's really about um, speed and ease. So it is really, really quick to get answers and it's really, really easy to use. Um, most online portals, you know, if you've used them for, for other services are kind of more for account administration, but we know that, you know, restaurants are always changing um, and adapting, especially over the last couple of years. And so, you know, you need to make your POS work for you and the depth of features and functionality in Squirrel are very, very wide. It's impossible to know everything. Um, and so, you know, how can you find those answers and, and know how to make Squirrel work for you? Um, well, why not lean on a repository of knowledge to help you? Uh, you'll see that it's super easy to search find answers, um, and quite often, you know, I, I hear from new users that they find themselves sort of clicking through and learning about stuff that they weren't even going there to learn about, um, you know, learning about new features that they didn't know existed. Um, and plus, if you ever get stuck, you still don't need to dial. Um, you can just click to start a chat or open a case with us. Um, and all of this is built with the mobile experience in mind, so you never need to leave the floor or 
if your cash manager is using the only Squirrel Office PC, then you know you don't need to kick them out. You can do it all for, all from your phone, um, just to do some simple research. So let's get into some of the details on the feature set. So I'm going to um, do a live demo of this shortly here, but I, I kind of want to walk you through a few key areas um, that most people use the portal for. The first one is the search functionality, the knowledge base. Um, literally, you know, you use the search just like you would use Google. Um, you know, type in a few keywords, and most articles, you know, most of the results you're going to get are articles on how to do something, either how to use. Um, POS or how to configure it the way you need it to or if you have an issue that you're trying to solve how to solve that issue um, we're really proud of our response times and support you know over the last few decades and uh, but nothing beats this type of speed um, it's literally seconds to, to find an answer so um, not only that but like when you know restaurant managers your managers are looking for answers or looking how to use the system or configure it um what better way to have them learn it than to do uh you know to encourage a bit a bit of research so this the search is the is the primary functionality here we'll go to the next one Oh, thanks. Uh, the other key functionality is this is where our support live chat lives. Um, it's it's on the portal, and this is what you can do if you're overwhelmed with the amount of information, or you just want to open up a chat for any reason at all. So right now we aim to get all chats answered in under 30 seconds, but to be honest, in 2021 so far our average response time is less than 10 seconds. It's around seven seconds, so it's it's lightning quick. Um, the chat isn't 24-7 yet, uh, but the more you use it, the more our customer base um, finds value in it, the more we'll invest there uh, with more agents, uh, more automation, um, and more improvements in, in general. So um, it's there, it's available, and it's light and quick. The other third kind of primary use case for this and there's a lot of other features functionality that we'll get into but the, but the other kind of main one is cases and work orders so you know at squirrel we value transparency uh, we believe that transparency makes us more accountable to you uh, we also know that you're busy and picking up the phone to update us on a case or inquire about a case or a work order like a dispatch or a pre-ship anything like that is not ideal so instead you know, you can log on to the portal and get that information with one or two clicks. Um, we've been working hard to ensure that our cases are always in a status that is clear, concise, and leaves no room for ambiguity. Um, and our field service team does the same. And I'll, and I'll show you that, how you can see, you know, if, if you're waiting on a dispatch, for example, you know, when is my tech going to be here? You can view all that on online. Um, and, uh, and same thing for, for other types of work orders as well. So really, really easy to see, and I'll, I'll show you that in a demo shortly. But before we get to the demo, um, I'm gonna be doing, demoing the desktop experience. Uh, I really do wanna highlight though that the mobile experience is great. This was how it was built. It was built in originally with this experience in mind. Um, it's, it's really, really easy to, uh, to log on from your phone or, or tablet or anything like that. And, um, at the same time, it's easy to create a, a shortcut on your on your home screen on your phone. So, um, so I want to just take a minute and show everyone how to do that, um, and I'll walk you through how to even access it to begin with. So, there's a short 13 second clip here on on how to save a mobile um, website to your home screen on your phone, uh, but it's it's really fast. So, before Cyrus hits play, there, I'm just going to walk you through um, the steps that you're going to see. So on this screen here, you can see this is just, this is the login page for the portal. Um, and in the top right corner, so this is the uh, Android experience on Chrome. Um, in the top right corner, there's an options button. One click there, and then one click to add to home screen. And that's it, and then click add. So it's literally just three three taps on your phone and, and you'll have a shortcut on your desktop. So uh, Cyrus, go ahead and, and hit play there so the folks can see it. Options, add to home screen, add. And that's it, it's done. It creates a nice little um, squirrel icon right on your home screen there. 
and um, makes it easy to access in the future. And if you're like me, you're probably you probably save your login credentials in Chrome or, or Safari if you're an iOS user. Um, if you are an iOS user, uh, quick Google on, on how to do that, and you'll find tons um, on on YouTube or or otherwise. So. Um, maybe just uh, show that one more time here, Cyrus, if you don't mind, just so everyone can see it. I know it's it's very quick. There we go. Awesome, thank you. Okay, let's get into the live demo. Let me know when I've got presenter mode there, Cyrus. And then for this, I uh, just wanna make sure. For this, we're just gonna turn off our webcam so that way um, you can maximize your, your desktop space here. But Cyrus, you can see my screen okay? Perfect. Okay, so um, the easiest way to get to the portal is from our website. So this is just squirrelsystems.com. This is our uh, homepage uh, as it is today. So to get to the login page, um, you literally just click on the support up at the top right here, and that's going to take you straight to the login. So I've saved my credentials here, so um, I can just, again, just a single click to uh, log in. Now, if you have people that you want to register um, or you want them to self-register, it's really easy. Just click on not registered, sign up here. It's just a few fields to fill out, um, you know, usual stuff, name, email, phone number. Um, and if it finds a match in our, uh, in our um, database, basically it will know what account you're associated with. So you'll be able to see your cases and things. Um, if you can't find a match, um, our portal administrator will reach out to you and just say, um, you know, who are you? And uh, let, let's make sure we can get you the right access. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, okay, uh, first thing you'll notice on here is we've put the search front and center because really this is where we want everyone to start, whether it's questions or you've got a case number you wanna look up or work order number, anything at all, you can kind of start with the search. Um, I'll go into some examples of that in, in a minute here, but I just wanna also walk you through kind of a high level, you know, what you can expect to see here. So you've got the home screen at the top with lots of, um, you know, quick links to knowledge articles. There is a great little demo video here. Um, so if, you know, down the road, uh, you know, you're onboarding a new manager and you want them to get um, familiar with this, they don't need to watch this whole uh, webinar. They can go watch this three minute um, quick clip. Um, and then there's also links, you know, handy links to our webinars uh, and, and all kinds of information right on the home screen. There's also the My Cases tab, where you'll see all of your historical cases, all of your open cases, those types of things. Um, so th th this is when you have reached out to support and they have uh, opened a, you know, a troubleshooting ticket. Uh, work orders similarly, but this is for hardware. So if you are getting hardware replaced, this is where you'll see um, all of your your work orders. And then under the more tab here, um, you know there's there's a number of things that we'll, we'll get through some of them. Uh, the most common one though, like I said, is the knowledge. So the knowledge base tab here has this is more sort of for browsing. Um, if you're, you know, if you know what you're looking for, most commonly people use the search, but um, here's where you can find links to most of our uh, most common FAQs. So let's go back to the home screen and, uh, and I'll kind of walk you through some typical searches. So like I said, there's, there's three usual use cases for reaching out to support or self-service um, knowledge base. It's, you know, you have an issue or you don't know how to use some functionality or you don't know how to configure something. So let's start with an issue. So um, we just recently went through uh, daylight savings time in the spring there and we'll be going through it in the fall again. So imagine you come in for your shift and you find that the terminals, uh, the time on all of your terminals is all wrong. So you log into the portal here and you search, you know, incorrect time. So right away, 
you know, I get a knowledge article that's host PC or terminal timing correct. That sounds exactly what I'm looking for. So if I click on that, you'll find that there is an article here that walks you through, you know, okay, this looks to be a known issue. Here's a uh, the fix for it. Um, a lot of our articles are like this with step-by-step -step instructions with quick uh, GIFs like these or um, or a little bit longer, you know, one to five minute um, videos as well, you'll find quite frequently. And even if it's not Squirrel, like this one, like we know that, you know, Squirrel has a lot of dependencies on Windows, Java, all kinds of things um, that, that all interact with each other. Um, for your POS and so you know we try to share as much of that as, as we can not just POS. So as another example so the search still remains up at the top um, so let's say you're creating a new promo uh, we know you know promos uh, come and go quite a lot in, in restaurants for, for a number of different reasons and you're creating a promo and you've just upgraded to Squirrel 11 and you see a uh, you know, a configuration option that you've never seen before. And it says, exclude promos from POS pick list. So let's say, you know, like, what the heck does that mean? I've never seen this before, you know, um, should I enable it? Should I disable it? So I search it. Okay, so here's a knowledge article that describes exactly what that flag and promo setup does. So, okay, so this looks to be a new feature um, and it's all about, you know, removing it from the screen to be only accessible through extensions like scanning a barcode. So, okay, interesting. So now you know the answer there, but it gets you thinking, wait, should I be using barcodes? What does that look like at POS? So you've kind of shifted now from how do I configure this to how would I use this? So imagine you start thinking to yourself, I mean, I've got merchandise, I've got a big wine list. Um, maybe instead of putting, you know, a million different buttons on screen, maybe I can just start using PLUs, but you want to know what that looks like. So if I just searched PLU here, I would see, okay, here's a, the PLU function, ordering menu entry by PLU. And so there's step-by-step -step instructions here. And again, a quick video on how a server would order something by a PLU number. So again, three common use cases there for searching the knowledge base. It's you know solving issues, configuring your system, or using your system. Um, so let's take a look at a few uh, other features functionality on, on the site. So imagine now this has kind of got you thinking even further all right, that's interesting. Maybe I should get a barcode scanner. Um, that would really make it more efficient for you know my cashiers uh, selling merch or my sommelier selling wine, you know th things like that. So you know maybe you've hit a dead end or or you just want to talk to someone about more information on on what that would look like, ordering, implementation, things like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a chat. I'm just going to open up the chat here. It automatically loads up my name, uh, Chris P. Bacon, and I'm just going to put in a subject of, you know, um, looking for more information on barcode scanners and click start chatting. Like I said, we target 30 second response time here. Um, this is live. This is an actual agent. Um, working in the solution center, Joyce, uh, who is uh, answered nice and quickly for us. And so now she's just got more questions, obviously. So I don't know, maybe I wanna know, like, I'm just gonna paste in some questions here. You know, is my version compatible? Do I have the right hardware? Where would I purchase a, a um, barcode scanner? Those types of things and see if, it's, let's see if she can help me out a little bit. So we'll wait for her to respond here. Okay, so she's pulling by her account information because I'm logged in. She knows exactly who I am and what account I, I belong to. Um, so the first thing is that she recognizes that I'm on Squirrel 11. I'm using the latest Squirrel workstations, the Workstation 140s, no compatibility issues. Great. I'll just ask where I can find more information about the scanners themselves now. 
Okay, so she's saying if I go to more in the top right and click on bulletins, I'll find a recent bulletin about our latest model. So here's one area that we haven't looked at yet. Um, under the more tab, there's product bulletins. So anytime there's changes to products or new releases, things like that, you'll often find bulletins being um, shared here. So I think the one she's referring to is the Honeywell barcode scanner product change. So I could click on that and I could see that the latest model is the Honeywell Xenon 1950. And then she's also um, provided me a direct link, so um, I don't need to click through there. So great, now I know what uh, what model it is. Oh, and now she's followed up with some more information here um, on a spec sheet from Honey Honeywell. So maybe I wanna open that up. And I can book that bookmark this for for reading later great oh, let me go back here so for now if i really want to buy one then or if i want to know more about the process of of that um she's made some recommendations here starting with our customer success team i can book a meeting with them right on our account account page so she's provided me a link here but instead of clicking on that link i'll just show you how to access that so in the top right hand corner you've got your um, icon here and if you just click on my account you'll see uh, a few different things. You'll see um, who your customer success rep is. So Megan, in this case, um, I see my salesperson, uh, my sales engineer, um, and there's a button right here to book a meeting with customer success. So if I just wanted to know more, maybe, um, you know, this is probably a good place to start. So if I click that, there's some options here as to, you know, why I would want to book that meeting. And then I can select, um, who, so if I know it's Megan I wanna meet with, I can select her name here. I can say, oh, looks like she's got some availability today. Great, let's uh, let's have a chat this afternoon. Um, so really, really easy. And let's go back here. Um, and then Joyce has followed up again saying, if you know for certain that I'm, I'm ready and I just, I just wanna buy one, um, I can click on uh, my, my sales rep here, Damien, I can find all of his contact information uh, right here, his email, his phone, so I could reach out to him directly. Now, if there, if this was something that wasn't a barcode scanner, it wasn't quite as complex, like maybe I just needed to buy some badge cards or something like that, there's actually a form right on the portal that you can fill out that will, uh, that will get you there. So if I click on more here, um, I can click on smaller order form and that will also open up a new tab for me here with just a really simple form um, for for small orders. If you don't see something here, that's where you'd want to reach out to your account manager. Sorry, I'm just going to exit full screen there. Um, okay, so that's kind of what a typical chat would look like. Um, some people do jump into the chat to solve problems, you know, like, hey, I've got this issue, I need help with it. Um, that's okay too, but the majority of the time, what the uh, what the chat agent is, is doing is really helping you navigate the portal, helping you find answers there. So if you don't know how to configure those PLUs, this is where, um, you know, she might uh, send you a link to an all based article or something like that. So that's the chat. So let's end that with Joyce. Okay, so um, let me um, walk you through a few of these other features really quick here. Uh, let me just check our time, see how we're doing. Yeah, we're okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, my cases. So when you go to my cases, what you'll find is that there's different list views. So it defaults to recently viewed ones because the assumption is that you're going to look at cases that you've currently, you know, that are active and, and, and that you've uh, recently worked on. But you can change this view to anything you want, all cases or just open cases, uh, things like that. So if I look at all open cases, I can see, 
you know, wow, I've got four open cases here. Um, you know, maybe I just reopened and, and there's been a lot going on. Uh, and so I can go check the status of these and, um, and even interact with them. So let's take a look at this first one. I see, right, I remember I had I, my checksums at POS were printing extra rows blank and, and causing us to use more paper than, than we'd like. So uh, I see the status is assigned to developer, but maybe I wanna know like, what does that mean? You know, what can I expect next? So if I just open up the case here, I could see, you know, all the case information, the status, who owns it, uh, you know, all these types of things. And I can see the latest update is always at the top here. So, you know, you can sort this and search and, and things like that. But for the most part, you're just looking right at the latest post here. So I see that the agent assigned to it, Will, um, has alerted me that, um, this has been submitted to our developers for a fix in the next cycle. Um, provided a link for what exactly that looks like if I want to know more. But um, given the medium priority of this, I should expect a software patch available within four to six weeks or sooner. And he'll reach out to me once once that's ready. Great. Nothing for me to do. I know exactly where it stands. Um, so if I go back to my cases here, let's take a look at a couple others. So one of these was a, uh, a bar sorry let's take a look at the qsr controller one first actually so the qsr controller um turned out it needed to be replaced right sorry not a controller a a monitor so the agent here has said that it needs to be replaced yep great job of the troubleshooting and created this work order um they've also been kind enough to just provide the tracking number for me so i can click right here oops click on the tracking and i can see it right there uh looks like it was delivered already on wednesday at the front desk and uh it was received by cv kendrick so i should go find out with from cv uh what he's done with that maybe it's in a av room or, or a storage room or something um that way i can go install it and then i can go chime in here um saying you know uh yes i've, I've received this and i've installed it successfully you can go ahead and close the case they're really really handy Another example, and this is a common way, especially for digital cases. If you've opened up a case online or through email uh, or chat, quite often um, the responses are gonna be in the same channel, right? So this case, you can see I opened it on the portal. And so um, the agent in this case, um, you know, I had asked, is there a way I can have my daily sales report emailed to me every night? So, yep, absolutely, you can do this. And scroll 11, this feature was added, scroll back office for easy setup. Check out this article for how. So I can just simply click on this article and it takes me right to the article, give me all the instructions I would need to get this set up. Easy peasy. So um, the last case I've got open here is on a uh, bar printer. So if I open this up, um, you know, I see that uh, one of my bar printers, the feed button was stuck, let's say. And, um, but in this case, I've requested a dispatch or maybe I have an on-site um, contract that, that entitles me to that uh, on-site service. So I've created a dispatch for this printer under this work order number. A text should reach out to you shortly with an ETA, but you can follow the progress by clicking on the work order itself. So there's a couple of ways I can get there. I can just click on this link. But also, if I clicked on work orders, I would see up at the top here, um, I would see my open work orders list. So by default, it shows me anything that's pending return. So things that we have shipped to you that, um, that are still pending return to us. Uh, the reason for this is most commonly, you know, um, controllers, IT folks, GMs, they kind of want to know like, hey, has anything not been returned that I might get invoiced for? And that was, you know, a common use case here. So that's why we've made this the default. Now, if I change this list to, you know, all work orders, I can see all of them here. Um, so for that bar printer one, if I just click on the work order itself, Again, I can see all the details. So I should have no questions um, for anyone after reading this. So I see, yep, they've got all the right information. I know that they've dispatched someone to come replace the bar three printer. So the tech's got everything um, that he needs. Now, if I wanna know, well, when is he going to be here? Um, I can scroll down here into the service provider updates. I can see, okay, the dispatch was created July 7th, 9.55 a.m. And the tech's meant to be here at 3 p.m today 
great, now I don't need to ask. Maybe you know the tech had called the restaurant and spoke to uh, a hostess who took down a message or something and I just haven't received that message yet, something like that. Who, who knows, but if I'm ever looking for an ETA, uh, it should be provided here, usually within an hour of, of creating the actual dispatch. So um, makes it very, very convenient. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's um, cases and work orders. I know I, I, I bruised through that pretty quickly, a um, lot to digest probably, but um, let's go through a last, just two short features here. The first one is um, the feedback button. So this button takes you to a form uh, for you to actually provide feedback to us on the portal itself. So if there's something that you wish you could see there or if there's a knowledge content that was missing or um, I don't know maybe there's something you wish you could do there but you can't today uh, this is where you can provide that feedback and uh, it'll go straight to me actually and uh, and our portal administrator um, and the last thing that we haven't really talked about yet is the um, training button so this button takes you to a similar form to request access to our Squirrel Learning Cafe. Um, this is what uh, what Megan had alluded to in the introduction here. The Learning Cafe is our online learning management system uh, where you can get uh, all sorts of training. And so if you've never used it and you want access to it, this is where you just fill out the simple form and that would uh, trigger an alert to Thomas Graham who would then uh, get you set up. So with that being said, I'll pass over to Thomas Graham to talk a little bit more about the uh, Squirrel Learning Cafe. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time today. I know uh, everybody's time is valuable. So uh, Cyrus can just give me control. I can share my screen. All right, so um, <clears throat> the Squirrel Learning Cafe, uh, you may be familiar with it. Maybe you've already got access to this. It depends on when your system was installed and what was going on. So what is it really? What What is the Squirrel Learning Cafe? Well, we all know marketing. So the Squirrel Learning Cafe is what marketing likes us to refer to our online training piece as. Uh, you may hear from your sales rep, maybe from one of our coordinators here. Uh, internally, we refer to it as the LMS uh, or just the online training. So there's a couple different names to it. It's all the same thing. It is one consistent spot for you to go and get training for your staff. So the nice thing is everybody is going to get the uh, same training across the board, no matter what you who you're hiring. So if you hire five servers you don't have to worry that server one was with joe today server two was with susan and them getting different training they're going to watch this they're all going to get the same training it's all going to be consistent now of course uh because this is generic for everyone it's not going to be your menu in the system and you may do things slightly differently in your restaurant but it's going to give them a good base knowledge on general use of the system now we break this up uh for everybody, so we don't give the servers access to videos on how to do things that are just for managers. Uh, we give them just the server training. So how do you ring in orders? How do you print checks? How do you settle bills? How do you move things from seat to seat? Things like that. On the manager side, uh, we give them access to videos on how do you apply promos? How do you do voids? How do you add menu entries from point of sale? As well as the back office stuff. So how do you do all of that uh, from sitting in the office, the back browser, adding menu items, adding employees, things like that. Uh, we've also tried to add in, and this is ever growing as our list of integrated partners grows, uh, our integrated software. So if you've got our Squirrels gift card program, there's training videos in there for that. If you're using uh, handheld payment machines for credit cards, there's a lesson for that. If you're using the what we call tethered, which are the 
credit card machines that are actually attached by wire to your terminal, there's a lesson for that. You've got QSR kitchen displays, there's videos for that. Uh, so we've really tried to add in, and as I said, it's a continuing thing. These uh, are growing month by month as we go. Now, also the great thing is you've got access to this from anywhere that you've got an internet connection. So if you've got unlimited data and you're sitting on the bus on the way to work, you can watch a training video. Uh, if you're in the staff room waiting for your shift to start, you can watch a training video. You're at home on the couch with your laptop, you can watch training videos. Um, it's really, really convenient. The uh, lessons have all been formatted to be optimized to the device that you're using. So if you're using a laptop or a desktop, it'll come up, it'll be a nice full screen. If you're using a cell phone, an iPhone, whatever it might be, it scales down, it scales up for the iPad. So you're getting the same view, the same lesson every time. Uh, and the nice thing about this is any new hires you have, you can have them trained on the use of Squirrel before they even hit the floor. So now, instead of somebody coming in and training them on how to use the point of sale, you've given them access to this, they've already learned it. Now they just need to learn your processes, which makes the ramp up time for your staff much, much faster. Um, so quickly, I'm just gonna show you guys a quick demo. I'm not gonna go quite as in depth as Will did with his, uh, simply because their videos and they take a bit of time. So I'm gonna show you quickly a little hardware video. We'll go through the libraries and see what we've got. And uh, we'll go from there. And everybody should be able to see my screen now, I hope. <clears throat> Uh, so when you log in, you'll get, uh, when you sign up, we will send you an email. It has the web address to get into this. Uh, and same as Will had mentioned with the portal, you can go in and create a shortcut, stick it on your desktop. Again, it will give you that nice little squirrel logo uh, on there. And so you've always got quick, easy access to it on your phone if that's what you need. Uh, you will also get a list of all of your usernames and passwords uh, for the users. When you sign up, you will get five users uh, generically, and we will split that up depending on what your needs are, if at all possible. So uh, if you're not using our kitchen display system, we're not gonna set up, we will include it so you can see it, but we're not gonna set up separate kitchen users. We're gonna give you managers and front of house staff, and off you go. Now the reason we keep it generic is because of attrition. People move around from job to job. We don't wanna have a user that's attached to Susan Brown, and then a month later, Susan quits, and now we've got this user that we can't use. So we give you, for lack of a better term, server one, server two, manager one, manager two, that sort of thing. Uh, and they're shareable. Multiple people can use the same login. That's perfectly okay, uh, just so that you can get your staff trained. So I'm gonna quickly log in here. Hopefully I entered the right password. I did. So why don't you start with, this is your main screen that you come into. Uh, there are some options across the top here. Uh, the most important ones here are your inbox. Uh, this is where when we do do updates, we've added new courses or uh, a new integration to something. We will send out periodically emails to let you know what the latest updates are in the LMS. If it's something that interests you, you can go take a look at it. If it's not something that interests you or you don't use it, then you don't have to. It's up to you at that point. Uh, you've also got your resume function here. Uh, as you can see, I've got my resumes already down here, which is great. Um, <clears throat> but if you've got a lot of courses, you use all of our stuff, uh, this could get pretty convoluted, so this will actually just bring you to a screen that shows you only the items that you need to resume. Now, just to show you what a general layout of this looks like, um, and those of you that are familiar with this, uh, we are going currently through a major revamp of how all of the lessons look and feel sound. Um, so there is gonna be a, a major change coming by uh, hopefully the end of September, we should have everything rolled out, but you may start noticing changes 
uh, sooner than that as we start uploading the new courses. So if I come into my server training, just to give you an idea of what this looks like, uh, we've tried to break this out as much as possible so you know exactly where you're at. You know, I don't want to have to do all of this in one sitting. I want to break it up. I want to watch one or two videos and then, you know, go have dinner, come back, watch a couple more, whatever it might be. Uh, this gives you the ability to just watch what you want to watch when you want, but it also helps with, oh, I can't remember how to print checks. So you can come in here, hit the start button, and you can watch a video on how to print checks. For the most part, these videos are all three to four minutes. Uh, so it's not a major time investment to come in and watch a video on how to print checks. Now, <clears throat> there will be some videos that are longer. Uh, as you all know, you've all got scroll systems. When you go to create a menu item in the system, there's a lot more steps involved. So videos like that are gonna take longer, but especially for your staff, they're all two to three minute videos. Uh, I think the longest one for server training is six minutes. So it's fairly uh, quick and easy and painless for them to get through. Now, quickly, just to show you some of the stuff we've been working on behind the scenes here, I've started to upload these now, is uh, we've started to include hardware setup with this. So when you order a new printer or you get that printer in the dispatch that uh, has been created for you and it shows up, you know, do you know how to set that up? Or you've decided to go with mobility and you want to uh, start using iPads. So I got in here. Now I've already gone, so it's probably gonna ask me if I want to zoom. There we go. <clears throat> so if you are familiar with this right now, uh, this obviously should be a drastic change to what you've been seeing uh, previously. We've tried to lighten it up, make it a little bit more uh, easy on the eyes. Uh, the original ones that are in there right now that I'm updating, they're very dark. So we've tried to make this a bit a bit lighter. So really quickly, we're just going to go and see how to set up an iPad. So with the hardware, we've opted to not have any audio with these. The actual training videos for servers and managers, there's audio behind those. Uh, but we understand that when you're setting up your hardware, you don't want to have to be rewind. Wait, what did he say? And rewind. Or if a server comes up and says, I need you to do a promo for me and you have to walk away, you don't have to worry about pausing or doing anything. So we've done these as slides just with images. We've got your text and you can come through. I'm going to scroll through these really quickly. You don't, uh, you don't need to go over the actuals, but uh, I've tried to highlight the areas that you need to look at when you come in here. And I say I because it is going to be my voice that you get to hear when you listen to these. Uh, I've also added a few little things in. So we've come in, we've downloaded it, we've launched it, we've gone into our settings, and now I'm telling you here that you need to enter in your IP address of the terminal that it wants to be. Well, that's all well and good because I know where to go and find the IP address for that terminal. You guys, however, might not know where to go and find that. So wherever needed, I've added in quick little videos or maybe their images. I was playing this yesterday, sorry, it didn't start at the beginning, uh, on how to find that information. So if you're looking at a terminal setup and it's like, oh, the printer plugs in here, I've added a little bit there on how to actually plug in the printer or things like that, just to make it a little bit easier for you uh, as you go through. So. Uh, <clears throat> We're putting a lot of work into this right now. As I said, it's going to be a complete top to bottom revamp uh, by the end of September. So uh, once everybody gets there, then you can see the new nice stuff. Now, as Will mentioned, uh, there are a couple different ways you can go about this. If you happen to be talking to Megan for something else and you don't have access, you can say, hey, by the way, Megan, I don't have access to this. Uh, but most conveniently, once you get set up for the portal there, uh, there is that uh, form that Will pointed out where you just go in, fill in your information that you need. It will automatically send my team an email, set up a task for us. And if you do it on the weekend, obviously we won't be around to get to it until probably Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but we're usually 
at a 24 to 48 hour turnaround time for the setup uh, and getting that email sent out to you. So uh, it's very user friendly. We've tried to link this up as much as we can. I can come back home. If now I want to find out how to set up a terminal, I can go and do that. Uh, it just, we're trying to make this as easy for you to be able to help yourselves for this stuff instead of having to call into Will's team and support or call my team on, oh, I got this terminal. How do we set this up? We've gone through and tried to make this as simple as possible. Uh, and really quickly, in a nutshell, that is the Scroll Learning Cafe, the LMS, the online training, whatever you want to refer to it as. Uh, that is what we've been working on there. So our goal, again, is to make this as easy as possible for you. You can look stuff up whenever you want to, just like you can with the portal. Go in. Uh, our upgrade by the end of September will also make this searchable. So if you are looking for a uh, how to apply a promo, you'll, you'll actually be able to come in, type in the word promo, and what it will do is it'll bring up a list of all the training lessons that mention promos. So then you just choose the appropriate one and away you go. If, let's say, we're in the manager back of or front of house and you're like, oh, how do I do this? Uh, it will find it in the video and it will jump you straight to that point in the video. Uh, so as I said, that's coming. It's not here yet. Uh, and Will and I are also working on making sure that we can get this integrated in so that straight from the portal, you'll be able to jump in and get access to this right away. So lots of exciting things coming for it. Um, even though they're not there yet, this is still an incredibly useful tool. Uh, we will get anybody set up that needs to get set up on it. So just please go to the portal, fill out that form, and we will start the ball rolling and getting you guys set up. And that's everything for me. And back to you, Cyrus. Thanks, Thomas. I actually just want to jump in and just say um, thank you again, Thomas and Will, for that detailed overview. Uh, lots of great information here. So it looks like we have a few questions that have come in. So Cyrus, I'm going to let you take over here. Um, I think first, Will, did you want to cover the tips and the takeaways? Sure, yeah, it should only take a second. Um, yeah, and again, thanks, Tom. I think that looks brilliant. I'm I'm really looking forward to getting these two systems uh, integrated uh, in in the future. I think uh, I think that's exciting. I think we're we're building an army across <clears throat> North America of Squirrel Power users. So uh, re really looking forward to it. Um, so just a few key takeaways, um, if we could. You know, again, we touched on this at at the top around uh, some themes today, and I think I think uh, Tom did a great job. Uh, showing those same themes around quick and easy. That's what these are meant to be, and uh, and, and hopefully you've found the same. Um, hopefully in today's session you'll see why these true these tools can you know truly are the fastest easiest ways to get you and your managers uh, on a path to using Squirrel to meet your business needs. Um, now there's a lot of information here, so it can be a bit overwhelming at first. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, you know, the first thing I would encourage everyone is to just log in, start checking it out. You're going to find that it's very intuitive and you'll probably start learning uh, a lot of new information that maybe you didn't know before. Um, I know, like I said, most of our attendees already had portal users and I created ones for those that didn't. Um, and some of you have already logged in, uh, which is great. So, uh, so let's move to the calls to action here if we can, Cyrus. So, First thing is register all your staff. Um, it doesn't need to be all of your servers and stuff, but people that you think really could use that extra level of support or um, could use uh, some training or uh, or access just to you know open cases and use the chat, you know those types of things. Um, so you can have them self-register on the login page, um, or if since all of you can log in, even if you want to. Log in, open up a chat, and just ask, you know, Joyce, for example, to uh, to create some users for you. We can do it in in seconds. Uh, it's it's really really easy. Um, the second thing is bookmark them. Um, bookmark them on your desktops, on all of your devices, both the portal and and the LMS. Um, 
it's really easy to get to from our website, so it's, it's, it's pretty easy to find, but uh, not, nothing beats a bookmark or a shortcut on your home screen. Um, and then, like I said, you know, during my demo is there is that short three minute introductory video on the portal on the homepage. Um, so I encourage you to rewatch that uh, really kind of simplifies this as, as much as we could to make it uh, short and sweet. And last but not least, don't forget that we're still here for you. Um, you know, we're not uh, this isn't displacing all of our current offerings, it's in addition to our current offerings under Squirrel Easy Care. So uh, by all means, you know, use the chat, email us, open up a case or call us, whatever your preference, uh, we're still here for, to support you um, no matter what, uh, especially if it's to use these uh, tools and, and features and functionality. So there we go. I'll uh, pass it back to Cyrus and Megan for the Q&A. Great. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks, Will. Uh, it looks like we've got a few questions here that we can answer for the group here. Uh, the first question here, Will, is what are the hours for the live chat that's on the self-service portal? Yeah, great question. I think I mentioned what it wasn't. I mentioned it was uh, not 24-7 yet, uh, but I didn't tell you what it was. Um, so thank you for the question. Um, right now it's 8 to 4 Pacific time. We're based out of uh, Vancouver here. So um, 8 to 4 Pacific time, Monday to Friday right now. Um, and, and like I said, the more uh, adoption that we get of this channel, the, the more resources we'll put into it. And, and we're looking into making it 24-7 um, as soon as we can. All right, another question here for you, Will. Uh, how do I open a case if chat is not available? Another great question. So, um, so on on the portal, when chat's not available, actually, the chat button will actually be replaced with a contact support or open a case uh, button. But also um, under the more tab up at the up at the top right, um, where you found like the product bulletins and the training, those types of things, there's a contact support button there and it's just two simple fields subject description just like you would in email you know things like that and as you type in the subject and description um, it'll actually provide you some potential answers even before you click uh, submit on the case is it worth showing that I don't know we're, we're almost out of time here but I think, I think we're good well um, we've got one more question here about cases um, how do I post an update on a case or work order so same thing if we, um, you click on my cases or click on my work orders um, and as soon as you as soon as you click on the link to open up that case or work order um, I kind of showed you how you know at the top of the screen it's the latest update on the case that's kind of front and center but actually above that there's a, a post button there and all you need to do is just click in the field type away uh, we always encourage you to tag so at mention you know the case owner so that way uh, you know for sure that they get alerted to it. Um, they'll get alerted to it no matter what, but um, but it's always just kind of good uh, good habit to be in to add mention um, the person that you know that you're working with. Okay. Okay, we've got a few other questions uh, coming through the, the question uh, window here. Uh, we, we got a question here, we struggle with a system that was set up many years ago, how can we audit our current system and make updated changes? For example, we struggle with the monitor and printer setup, use and maintenance. Will, do you wanna take that question? Yeah, for something like that, I, I guess it would depend on the specifics. Um, I mean, the you know to do an audit for something like that, I would actually recommend um, reaching out to, your, to customer success or an account executive to discuss an on-site audit. Uh, it is a service that we offer, um, we call it a site walk, uh, where essentially we can uh, dispatch someone out to your location and do a full walkthrough uh, with you, make recommendations, um, things like that. But if it's something specific, you know, um, around like struggling with the monitor and printer setup, um, for sure that's where the LMS would come in handy. Um, you know, spend a few minutes, go through the training on those on those um, particular topics, and then that way you'll you'll become an expert and 
and you'll, and you'll know how to set it up, especially during these times when a lot of things are shifting and changing, right? People are moving terminals from their patios back inside or mm-hmm. opening up uh, banquet halls now and all their terminals have been, you know, sitting in storage and things like that. So I think it's, uh, it's really, really valuable right now. Okay. Thanks, Will. And I think we've got time for two more questions here about the LMS. Um, so the first question is, how much does the LMS Squirrel Cafe cost to set up for our account? Is there an ongoing cost to LMS? Uh, ask Thomas? Anybody out there that uh, knows me, my favorite answer to everything is yes and no. Uh, there is no cost to the LMS if you are on a Squirrel Easy Care uh, contract. With that, we will supply you with five users. As I mentioned, it'll be a couple of manager users and a few front of house users uh, to get you through. Now, where the cost comes in is if you decide you want to be very specific. If you want 40 users uh, and you want to have them all set up with their own individual user IDs, then we can definitely look at something uh, for that to uh, move forward. We do have some customers that go that route because they want to be very specific and know exactly who did what training. Uh, so that option is always available. Uh, but the out of the gate, you need access to the LMS. It is no ongoing cost. You will just need to make sure that you maintain your Squirrel Easy Care contract. Okay. Thanks, Thomas. Um, and I think we're just going to have time for one more question here. How do we invite other users to the portal so they can use it? Will, do you want to take that? Yeah, sorry, I was just uh, typing that answer actually. So the easiest way is the self-registration, um, to be honest. So you don't really need to invite them. You can just tell them, go to squirrelsystems.com, click on support, and then click on register uh, and, and to fill out the form. Um, but like I mentioned before, if you don't want to direct your managers to self-register, if you you want to send us a list so we can just do it for them, I'm happy to do that as well. Easiest way to do that would just be, um, you know, log in, open up the chat and ask, uh, ask the chat agent to do that. Or you can email us at solutions at squirrelsystems.com and just say, you know, here are the names and email addresses of the users I'd like to create. And uh, we can do that for you as well. There's no, uh, no no ability right now for you to create other users. All right, thanks, Will. Um, I think that's all the time we have for questions. If you do have any other questions following the webinar, please reach out to uh, customer success or your Squirrel authorized rep or account rep. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it back to Megan to um, close things off for us. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, and thank you to everyone who submitted those questions. Um, so it looks like that's all the time that we have here today. But just to wrap things up, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will be following up with a short post webinar survey. Um, your feedback on today's presentation would be greatly appreciated. We will also be following up with an email to view the recording and the slides in the next day or so. And please stay tuned for an invitation to our next monthly webinar within the next few weeks. Um, as I'm sure you know, we conduct these on the first Thursday of every month. And with that said, if you would like to see the upcoming webinars as well as the past recordings, please visit our website at squirrelsystems.com. You can click on blog on the main menu and then click on webinars. Okay, and if you have any questions on today's webinar, uh, we will post a link in the chat to make an appointment with a customer success representative, as Will showed earlier in his demo. Uh, you can also reach us via email at customer success at squirrelsystems.com. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for participating in today's presentation, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, everyone.